In this video, we will discuss the problem number of ways to arrive at destination. The problem says that we are in a city that consists of n intersections which are numbered from 0 to n minus 1 with bidirectional roads. So, between some intersections, the input are generated such that you can reach any intersection from any other intersection and there is at most one road between any two intersections. So basically this is a single connected component that is given to you and you are given an integer array n and you are given a 2D array as well. So we will see what the 2D array road says. So it says that basically you will be given in the road of i you will be given the node u you will be given the node v and you will be given the time taken for reaching there. Let's say you are given the node u v if you are given a particular node u if you are given a particular node v then basically that means that u and v are having a bi-directional edge, edge in between them that is from u you can go to v from v you can go to u and apart from this the time taken will be t so that is what the road array indicates for every triplet that is for every tuple now what we need to do is we need to find the shortest path such that we can travel from 0 to n minus 1 so basically the problem says that the source node will be nothing but 0 and the target node will be n minus 1 so we need to find the shortest time in which we can reach from 0 to n minus 1 so there can be various possible paths okay now we have to find the shortest amount of time so when we have to find something that is shortest that is the minimum amount of time or the minimum edge weight let's say so in this case whenever in the graph we have to find something like this so which algorithm comes to our mind there are two types of algorithms that can come to our mind basically one is bfs when i say bfs so bfs can be used when bfs can be used when the edges are not weighted when whenever every from every edge like the edge weight is one unit then i can use bfs but here whenever the edge weights are different like you can see here the edge weight is five here the edge weight is two so in these cases which algorithm will we use we'll use the Dijkstra algorithm for solving this particular problem. Because if we have to find from source to destination, what is the least amount of time taken? In that case, what we will simply do is, we'll simply have the Dijkstra algorithm. Because Dijkstra algorithm will help us to find the shortest path from the source node to the destination node, okay? Because in this, we use the min heap concept. Now, talking about this, so can there be only one path that gives us the shortest amount of time? No, there can be multiple paths that will give us the shortest amount of time. So in that case, the problem says that we have to return the number of number of ways, that is the total number of paths from the shores to destination that are having the shortest amount of time. Okay, that is having the short like that are having the minimum amount of time from reaching the source to destination. All those all those paths we have to return by doing a modulo with 10 to the power 9 plus 7. Now, I am assuming that you know about the pre, about the Dijkstra algorithm because the Dijkstra algorithm is a prerequisite for this particular approach because what we will be doing initially is when we talk about Dijkstra algorithm, so the first step is that we initially mark every node's distance as infinity like 2's distance, 1's distance will be marked as infinity from the source, 3's distance will be marked as infinity, 5's distance will be marked as infinity. So for every node, for every node except the source node, for every node like from starting from 1 till n minus 1, for every node the distance initially will be marked as infinity okay because we'll try to reduce that in uh, distance we try to relax that particular distance okay now what we do in this part is we basically say that d of 0 is marked as 0 because we will start from here then after that whenever we are at a particular current cell then what we try to do we try to go through all the one one by one we try to iterate through the adjacency list of the current uh, node and then we try to relax all the edges okay so how do we relax all the edges so if we let's say if we want to rela relax all the edges in that case what we basically do is suppose this is the node so this is having the uh, distance as zero because d of zero is marked as zero then if i see from zero to six if i want to reach so i can say that initially six uh, d of six will be marked as infinity correct so i can see that zero and 6 have an edge. So from 0 there is an edge going towards 6. So I will say that what is the distance. So I will say that the distance will be nothing but d of 0 plus the edge weight that is 7. Correct. So this is what 0 plus 7. This will be nothing but 0 plus 7. And is 0 plus 7 lesser than infinity? Yes. 0 plus 7 is lesser than infinity. Then I will update the edge weight as 7. Okay. That is what I will do. Now here also if I see from 0 to 4. If I see from 0 to 4. So what is the edge weight? Initially like I can say that from starting from the source node till 4 reaching 
it will it is marked as infinity but if i see now so now i can say that 0 is at a distance of 0 from itself so 0 plus 5 is what 5 so i'll update this distance with 5 now so I, basically i'm relaxing this particular node again if i see so from uh, 0 to 1 the distance is 2 so now like the distance is what the distance basically the edge weight is 2 so i can say that since it is marked as infinity so i'll update it to 2 so that is how i'll be relaxing it every time and whenever it is equal to the minimum then i'll update the count other and whenever it is the last node then i'll see that is whatever distance i'm getting uh, whatever distance i'm uh, having whatever edge weight i'm taking whatever amount of time i'm taking if it is equal to the shortest amount of time then i'll update my answer uh, i'll do an answer plus plus and I'll, I'll do a modulo of it otherwise if it is not then i'll do other things okay and if it is not the last node then i'll keep on relaxing it if the distance is uh, if the distance is lesser because if d of 0 plus like if d if d of the current node if distance of the current node plus the edge weight if it is greater or equal to the d of v then i'll update the d of v okay that is what we do in dijkstra algorithm and for this we will use the mini heap concept so what we will be doing here basically is now we can see that we have to find the number of ways so first thing is that we'll be applying the dijkstra algorithm after applying the dijkstra algorithm we'll count as well so for this what we can basically do here is we can first of all have a modulo so we can say that int mod is equal to nothing but 1 e 9 plus 7 okay after this what we need to have is we need to have an answer so i'll say that the answer is equal to 0 after this we need to have a vector into distance that will store the distance of uh, all the nodes from the source node so i'll say that n comma int max because initially i'll mark the distance as int maximum that is positive infinity then i'll also have a vector pair that will consist of the adjacency because in the adjacency list uh for like if i talk about the adjacency, adjacency list part so normally in the adjacency list in the adjacency list of u we store v and then in the adjacency list of v we store u but now in the adjacency list of v, v u i'll not only store uh, v but i'll also store the distance right i'll also store the time basically t that is the parameter that is the edge weight and for v also in the adjacency list of v i'll not only store the node u but i'll also store the time because that is what i'll be requiring while doing the, the extra approach so what i'll do is i'll have a pair int comma int okay uh, so let's name it as uh, adjacency now i'll have the size as n then what we need to do here is we need to say that we'll iterate through the roads array so for uh, let's say uh, auto it like uh, i'll iterate through the road uh, array that has been given to me and what i will be doing here is i'll simply say that i'll iterate through it to get the u v and t so i'll say that int v is equal to nothing but it of zero okay uh, like int u is equal to nothing but the first node then v is equal to the second so it of the one because it behaves like a vector now the time t is what t is nothing but it of two so once i have stored all these things so what i need to do is i need to store them in the adjacency list so i'll say that adjacency of uh, u dot push back in the adjacency list of u first of all i'll push back what i'll push back v comma the time taken okay that is the edge weight and similarly in the adjacency list of v what i will be doing is in the adjacency list of v i'll simply push back nothing but u comma t okay now once the adjacency list has been prepared then what is our other task the other task is, is to have a min heap so we'll declare a priority queue for that in c plus plus in java also you can do the same thing so we'll have a priority queue so let's quickly declare a priority queue that is nothing but a min heap in uh, c plus plus so what we'll be doing here is because we always want to find the minimum so that's why we use a min heap for the dijkstra approach now what i'll do is i'll have a pair uh, that will consist of the first part then in the second part uh, what i'll instead of vector int i'll have vector of pairing because i'm using a parent so that is what i'll have now the third parameter will be nothing but greater and earlier i used to have int but here since i'm using parent so i'll use a parent okay now once i have uh, declared my priority queue so once this particular part has been done so what i'll do is i'll simply say that i'll mark the distance of the node zero that is the source node from itself will be at a distance of zero so i'll update it to zero after this what we can basically do is we can inside the priority queue we can simply push the distance of zero okay basically that means the distance along with the node i'll push that into the priority queue and then i'll iterate until the priority queue is zero so while the priority queue dot size or i can say that while the priority queue is not empty till that point of time i'll keep on iterating through all the pairs okay so what i'll be doing here is i can simply say that i'll take out the let's say the current node so i can say that the current node 
will be nothing but the pq dot top dot second because it is stored in the second part of the pair so i'll first of all take it out so pq dot top dot second and uh, what will the what will be the edge weight so i can say that the weight is indicated by nothing but the first part so i will say that it is nothing but pq dot top dot first okay after this part has been done so i'll pop the current uh, pair out of the priority queue okay and then i'll try to move through the i'll try to move through all the nodes that are connected uh, i'll try to move through the adjacency list of the current uh, current node and i'll try to relax all the nodes if the distance is lesser so i'll say that I, i'll iterate through the adjacency list of the current node and i'll try to relax all the child nodes there okay so what i can basically do here is so once this much part has been done so what we'll be doing here is in this part we can simply say that we'll iterate so what will be iterate so we'll say that now we will say that the other node let's say is v okay so it will be nothing but it will be indicated by it dot first because uh, adjacency the first part of the adjacency stores the node in this you can see and then it stores the edge weight okay so i'll say that what is the new weight so i can say that the new weight the new weight will be nothing but the current edge weight plus the it dot second okay that is nothing but if i say let's say if i have a particular connection like this if this is connected to this and this is connected to this now if suppose that this is having a distance of let's say 15 and this is the current node that i'm at okay and this particular node let's say is uh, having the distance as 10 and this particular edge weight is 4 so this is edge weight is nothing but it dot second so if the current uh this distance that is 4 plus this uh 10 plus 4 if it is lesser than this distance that is already stored if it is lesser than d of v in that case what we'll simply do is we'll instead of this 15 we'll update it to 14 we'll say that okay there is a smaller much a shorter path for reaching this particular cell v okay so that is what we will try to do every time so that is what how we will write it but we need to check that if it is the last node so if v is equal to the last node if v is equal to n minus 1 if it is the last node then we need to count the answer as well but suppose if it is not the last node in that case we'll in that case if the distance is lesser then we'll simply update it so we'll say that if the uh, distance of uh, v okay is uh, if the distance of uh, v if it is greater or equal to the new weight okay like if the if it is greater or equal to so if the new weight is lesser like if the new distance is lesser so in that case what i'll do is i'll update the d of v with the new distance so i'll say that d of v is equal to nothing but the new distance and then i'll push this particular thing into my priority queue so i'll say that priority queue dot push nothing but the distance that is the distance of v so i'll say that i'll update the distance of v like after relaxing so this particular node has to be pushed inside the priority that is what we do in the dijkstra algorithm so we'll push it with the new edge weight okay that is the that is it that is its particular edge weight along with the vertex that is v because uh, in the first part i stored the distance from the source node and the second part i stored the particular that particular node but suppose if it is the last node so if it is the last node then i need to check so if it is the last node so in that case i need to check if the distance of the v if for reaching this particular last node if uh, if the distance is equal to the new distance okay so if that is the case so if it is equal to the new distance so in that case if it is like if suppose that there was a particular path like in this case in the original example we can see that for reaching the node 6 the minimum path uh, value is nothing but 7 the minimum time taken is nothing but 7 so since the minimum time taken is 7 so suppose 7 is already stored inside the answer now uh, okay so suppose that in the nw uh, like already 7 is stored right so like if if the new uh, path that i am going to get if suppose that i follow another path if suppose that i follow if suppose that this is the path and d of 6 is already updated to 7 and suppose i come through some other nodes and now i come in here says that i am traveling i am taking a distance of nothing but 7 so if the new distance that i am able to get is nothing but 7 uh, is nothing but 6 is nothing but 6 so if it is equal to uh, if it is equal to the distance of the uh, current uh, cell the last cell that is the n minus 1 cell basically this is the n minus 1 cell if the new distance that i have traversed in the graph through by following some other path if it is equal to the distance right if it is uh, equal to if the new edge weight let's say is 7 so if the new edge weight is equal to the uh, minimum uh, distance for reaching this particular cell currently then i'll update my answer now because if th there's already the minimum path is stored as 7 for reaching 6 
and i uh, get that particular minimum path uh, minimum uh, path minimum time again as 7 through some other path in that case i need to update my answer because if if i can reach this particular node in minimum 7 uh, 7 amount, 7 units of time and through other path also i'm reaching it reaching it in 7 amount of time so i'll increment my answer and i'll take the mod as well okay so in that case what i'll what i'll do is i'll say that okay if this is the case then we'll say that okay answer is equal to uh, nothing but answer plus 1 and I'll do the modulo with mod. Okay, that is what I'm going to do. Otherwise, if that is not the case, right? So if that is not the case, so if it is the last node, but this is not equal to the distance, like if it is uh, the last node, so suppose that we were at the last node, okay? Suppose this was the last n minus 1th node, okay? This was the last node, and the distance, uh, like the distance of the n minus 1th node, let's say was something very high, let's say it was 15, and the new distance that I was getting, suppose that the new distance that I have got through some other path, okay for reaching this uh, from the starting node 0 till this particular n minus 1 itself if the new new weight new edge weight or the new uh, shortest path new shortest time that i have ha have now is nothing but 10 so in that case i'll if the distance uh, from the 0 if i was following some other path and i'll i was getting a distance of 15 through that but i was taking a time of 15 units for reaching this particular node but if i have another path that gives me a lesser time so in that case, I'll update this particular thing with this. So I'll say that n minus uh, d of n minus one distance of the last node will be nothing but updated to the new new uh, edge weight or the new time you can say, right? The shorter time. So in that case, I'll update it. So in that case, what I'll say is I'll say that I'll uh, mark my answer as one because this is the first uh, time that I'm seeing this particular uh, new weight. So I'll say that uh, in that case, uh, I'll say that uh, else if part in the else if part I should write it. So else if it happens that the uh, distance of the uh, v if the distance of v is greater than the n w so new weight new edge weight so in that case i'll say that okay i can reach it in much smaller time so i'll say that the distance of v should be updated to the new edge weight and i should do answer is equal to one because i should initialize it or update it as one now once it's calculated so in that case uh, it will store all the possible paths and i can simply return in the end the count of the paths so i'll return the answer that will show the count of the paths after applying the dijkstra algorithm so let's try and compile to see if there is any error that we might have committed on this very large code. Okay, so there are some compilation errors. It says that new weight was not declared. Yes, I need to declare this new weight. So let's quickly declare it. And then we will see what happens further. Okay, so I think it gives us the right output for the sample test case. That is, the total number of paths will be 4. Now let's try and compile it as well to see if it works or not. So you can clearly observe that our solution is working for all the test cases that are given in this particular question. Talking about the time complexity of this code, so actually you can see that the time complexity for this particular word, code will be nothing but the time complexity that will be taken by the Dijkstra algorithm. So we know that the Dijkstra algorithm takes nothing but order of m cross uh, m into log n time, you can say, right, that, that is what the time complexity of the Dijkstra algorithm is, plus another order of n we are taking for traversing this particular array, the roads array. So the total time complexity is nothing but order of m log n plus order of n. And talking about the space complexity, so what we are doing is we are storing all these things in the priority queues that, that is taking time complexity plus we are uh, that takes under time complexity plus we are also using the adjacency list so that that also takes time complexity so space complexity so in that case uh, we are taking some space complexity uh, by using the priority queue and we are also taking some space complexity by using the adjacency list so the overall space complexity of our code will be nothing, nothing but m plus n. In case if you understood, so make sure to hit the like button, comment on understood as well. Thank you.